My name is Ruth Malloy, and I was born in Brockville, Ontario. My mother actually was born in Canada. She was one of the few people of Chinese descent who was born in Canada. And she comes, was born in North Bay. And her parents were um, one of the few people who had um, uh, the, the, the mother, the wife, arrived in Canada. Very few women arrived at that time. And so she and her family were born, or her siblings were born in, in North Bay. My mother, um, she, having gone through it, um, taught us that this name calling that we were subjected to as children were by people who were ignorant. And so the onus was on them and not on us, and we grew up. Um, particularly after we came to Toronto and met other Chinese Canadians, that uh, we were not um, second-class citizens. I always um, was interested in these, why people were doing this to us. And so that's why I took sociology and psychology in, in school. And um, afterwards, I had an opportunity to go to a, uh, a workshop after I graduated. Um, there was a workshop I read about in Washington, D.C. on how to, um, how to um, deal with, um, in a nonviolent way, to fight against um, racial discrimination. Mm. It was organized by the um, Congress of Racial Equality and the Fellowship of Reconciliation. And the Fellowship of Re Reconciliation was a nonviolent movement. And in fact, they both were. And they were both involved in, at that time, the. Um, integrating uh, restaurants and, and um, swimming pools in Washington, D.C. So um, I was up there a month, and I learned a lot about what was going on there. And uh, we took part in demonstrations. We, we were an interracial group, and we went to swimming pools. Mm -hmm. um, f uh, fortunately for me, we never got arrested. It was the first group in a series of annual groups from, um, that were organized there that never got arrested for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> While I was there, the, the director, whose name is Wally Nelson, he was one of the most amazing person and most consistent persons I've ever known. So he asked me, what, what's happening with the civil rights movement in Canada? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know then. Uh, so when I came back to Canada, I started asking questions and uh, just happened to talk to people in the mental health movement, the Canadian Mental Health Association. I met um, Alvin Gamble. And Alvin said, oh, you should meet Sid Bloom. The Joint Labor Committee was the only group that was doing anything. And, um, and effectively, I went to meet Sid Bloom and um, asked him what was going on in, in Canada. And he told me about Dresden and he asked me to take part. Um, Hugh Burnett and I and Bromley, Bromley Armstrong, we decided that we would be the test case. And then we also fortunately had um, uh, Gordon Donaldson, who was um, a reporter of the Toronto Telegram, um, who was very, very much interested personally in this case and had been writing about it and mm -hmm. writing about the discrimination in Dresden and the fact that they weren't serving blacks in the restaurant there. Um, we, um, he, he came along as part of the test case. He and Sid um, were, went as the control group, and then we also had two other reporters from the Star. Mm -hmm. So it was um, very important, and this is what we learned in Washington, very important to have the, the press with us, and very important to have the government with us in terms of the law having just been passed the Fair Accommodations Practices Law had been pa passed earlier that year. Well, we sat there uh, for about 20 minutes and we were not served. And um, it was obvious to me that uh, uh, that Hugh was known to the people in the restaurant. Um, Mackay, the, the owner of the restaurant, came out and um, actually he was carrying a cleaver at that point and um, it was going like that with the cleaver. And he said, I think, he, if I remember correctly, he said to Hugh, you know Hugh, I can't serve you. I had never been involved with the labor 
with labor at all. So it was a wonderful um, educational um, process for me to learn about the fact that they were doing it and why they were doing it. They were doing it because they didn't want their there's unity in the labor movement. You, you don't want your your blacks and your um, Chinese and everybody else um, fighting against each other within the labor committee, mm -hmm. the, within the the, um, the movement. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to be united in fighting against anything. I'm so glad I was able to see Bromley uh, recently, and unfortunately, I've heard that he's been not well. And um, it's been one of the highlights of my life working with you, Bromley, because I've learned a lot and it's actually been fun as well as very important and very satisfying and you've taught me a lot.